When you hear the word radio, it probably makes you think of music stations, talk shows, or maybe even the small box in your car that lets you tune into broadcasts while driving. But have you ever wondered why it's called a radio in the first place? It's such a common word in our daily lives that most of us don't even think twice about it. The word itself, radio, has a fascinating history that goes all the way back to the birth of modern communication. And in this video, we're going to dive deep into the origins of the word, the science behind it, and how it became the universal name for the technology that completely changed the way humans connect with each other. Let's explore, right here, on History of Simple Things. To start, we need to rewind to the late 19th and early 20th century, when scientists were first experimenting with wireless communication. Before radios, long-distance communication relied heavily on the telegraph and the telephone, both of which used wires to transmit electrical signals. The telegraph, invented earlier in the century, used coded electrical pulses, what we now know as Morse code, to send messages across great distances. The telephone soon followed, transmitting actual sound over copper wires. But what if you could send signals without wires at all? That was the big question, and that's what pioneers like Heinrich Hertz, Guglielmo Marconi, and Nikola Tesla were trying to figure out. Heinrich Hertz, in the 1880s, proved the existence of electromagnetic waves, those invisible ripples of energy that move through space at the speed of light. These waves could travel without a physical wire, and they could be controlled and detected. Hertz himself wasn't particularly interested in using these waves for communication, but his work laid the foundation for others. That's why the unit of frequency is named Hertz. Fast forward a few years, and Marconi picks up on this idea, realizing that you could use electromagnetic waves to send signals wirelessly. He developed the first practical wireless telegraph system, which sent Morse code messages through the air. At the time, it was often referred to as wireless telegraphy. So, where does the word radio come into all this? Originally, the technology didn't go by that name at all. In the early years, people used phrases like wireless telegraphy or wireless communication. The word wireless was actually the dominant term, especially in Britain. People would say, I have a wireless set, instead of saying radio. But in the United States, a different term began to gain traction, radio. The word comes from the Latin root radius, which means ray or beam. It was meant to describe the way electromagnetic waves radiate outward in all directions, like rays of light spreading through space. In short, radio was shorthand for radiotelegraphy or radiotelephony, both of which describe sending signals through radiating waves. By the early 20th century, as the technology improved, the term radio became the more convenient word to use. People dropped the longer forms like radio telegraph and simply said radio. It was quick, easy, and perfectly captured the essence of the technology. Waves radiating outward, carrying information. Around the 1920s, when voice and music broadcasting became popular, Radio had fully replaced wireless in most parts of the world, especially in America. Britain held on to wireless a bit longer, and even today you might still hear older generations in the UK refer to the radio as a wireless. But globally, radio became the universal word. The spread of the word also shows how language evolves alongside technology. Think about it. When radio broadcasts first became widespread, people were amazed at the idea of listening to live music, news, or speeches right from their living rooms without a single wire connected. 
The word radio carried with it a sense of wonder. It was modern, scientific, and futuristic. Compare that to wireless telegraphy, which sounded more like a technical manual. The simpler word won out, and the world embraced it. What's also fascinating is that radio didn't just describe the device, it described an entire medium. Just like we say TV to mean both the physical box and the entertainment it delivers, radio became both the receiver on your table and the music, shows, and voices coming through it. Over time, radio became a household word. Families gathered around it every evening, much like we gather around televisions or computers today. In that sense, radio evolved beyond its Latin roots to symbolize culture, connection, and shared experiences. Now, let's pause and think about the scientific side for a moment. Radio waves are part of the electromagnetic spectrum, the same family of waves that includes visible light, microwaves, and X-rays. They have longer wavelengths than light, which allows them to travel great distances and even pass through walls in the atmosphere. This makes them perfect for communication. When you tune a radio, you're adjusting it to detect a specific frequency of these waves. The broadcaster sends out a signal, the antenna on your radio picks it up, and the electronics inside convert it into sound. It feels almost magical, but it's really just physics at work. As technology advanced, the meaning of radio expanded too. We began using radio waves not just for broadcasting music and speech, but also for things like radar, satellite communication, and eventually even Wi-Fi and cell phones. In fact, when you connect to Wi-Fi, you're essentially using a form of radio communication. So the next time you open an app or stream a video, remember, you're using technology built on the same principles as that old wooden box your grandparents listened to in the 1930s. So why is it called a radio? Because the word captures the core of the technology, radiation of waves carrying information through the air. From its Latin roots to its adoption in American culture, and finally to its worldwide use, Radio became the perfect word for one of the most transformative inventions in history. It's short, it's scientific, and it reflects exactly what the technology does. Without it, modern communication as we know it, from emergency broadcast to your favorite songs on the commute, wouldn't exist. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.